Hello, I'm Dr. Susan Langer from California and I'm here today in Highland Cottage in Iona, Scotland with Judith Moore and we have had this amazing connection and she has written this book called Visions of Wisdom and it's about the 13 grandmothers and I'm going to talk to Judith about Detta Langer's connection with the grandmothers. She was one of the original grandmothers and Judith is going to tell us more today and her own connection with the grandmothers. So over to you Judith. is one of my dearest friends from the Council of the Grandmothers that was originally formed in Tucson, Arizona by Mary Diamond and a group of visionary grandmothers in 1994. And I met Lorraine, I believe in 1998 at the Grandmothers Council and she met Eleanor at a council I wasn't there. So what brings me here to be with you now to speak of Detta is some connections from the Grandmother's Council that weaves us all together. But um, with ladies I've never met. I never met Detta and I haven't met Eleanor. But yet we're woven together because of Mary Diamond's vision. And Mary Diamond and a group of crones had a vision. They believed that the prophecy of the Hopi people that says when the grandmothers speak the world will heal was a vision that they wanted to honor with a calling of a circle of women uh, elders to celebrate eldership to learn uh, from each other to uh, drum and dance and experience the connection to the earth and to circle wisdom and one of my dearest friends, Allegra Alquist, was one of the first grandmothers in that council along with Mary Diamond and Detta. And when I came in 1996, which was two years after the council was formed, I believe I was um, close to 50. I think I was 47 years old, so I was rather young grandmother, as was some time ago. <laughs> and I heard about the grandmother in England. And she was spoken of with great enthusiasm and, and uh, respect and love because she was a mystic and she represented what the true spirit of this grandmother council means. When I first came to the grandmother's council, I was like a, a young woman, relatively, I thought I wasn't that young, but all at once I was with these women of wisdom and character and strength and creativity, and it entirely changed my vision of what aging meant. And they became my teachers. You know, Barry, Barry was a teacher. She taught us my first creative writing was with Barry at the Grandmother's Council, and now I've written books. But when I first came to the Grandmother's, it was Barry's inspiration that opened me up to be able to write, and I had never written before then. Yeah. And the weaving has woven me together with women like Robbie Lapp and Lorraine Norgard, who are committed to the earth, who are committed to sustainability, and to truly doing ceremonies, How however that weaves, but circle ceremonies, speaking with intention and sharing our hearts. And one thing I've noticed about anyone who's been part of the Grandmother's Council is you feel connected 
wherever you are, you feel connected to something that's a beautiful weaving, a beautiful grandmother's weaving. And, you know, years later, you can still hear the grandmother's drums beat mm -hmm. and see their faces and their wisdom. Um, the Grandmother's Council was formed in 1994 with Mary Diamond and Allegra Alquist and Detta and other grandmothers, some of them I met later on during the councils. And one of those women was Kit Wilson. For years she did the Grandmother's Newsletter and she was a prime weaver of the Tucson gatherings of grandmothers. And her heart was connected to Iona. And many of the grandmothers traveled over here and met with Edda and, and did the mystical work in, in Glastonbury and Iona and the connection to earth wisdom and to the mysticism of the ancient Celtic spirits. So uh, I'm amazed that when I found out from Lorraine when I planned to come to Iona, that I would be here at the same time as the spreading of the ashes of Detta. And I knew that it was meant to be. And now I'm honored, I'm so honored to be in some way a representative of the Grandmother's Council. I, I haven't been able to go for some years to the October gathering in Tucson because I travel to Holland and Belgium, I teach uh, workshops and and do healing and things like that. So um, I haven't been able to come for, but every full moon or every October when they're celebrating the Grandmother Circle in Tucson, you know my heart's there. And now there are several Grandmother's Council. There was one formed in the South with Terry Bourne and um, Judy, her name was. And then up in, in the Northwest, the Grandmother's up there with Robbie Lapp and um, they're, they do water, wear, seal, water wheels and water ceremonies along the Columbia River with Robbie Lapp. Wow. And Lorraine Nargard up in Wisconsin is a water protector. And she, she prays with the women, the Ojibwe women, and uh, they do walks for water. And the last grandmother's council I attended was in 2013 on Madeline Island with Lorraine Norgart and the grandmothers up in Wisconsin. So I'm, I'm honored to put my part in. And with this vision of wisdom, it was the inspiration for me first receiving the messages of the vision of wisdom, the messages of the Spirit Council of the 13 grandmothers. And so I put a dedication in the front of the book to Mary Diamond and I'm very honored and grateful to be here. Thank you. Well, I have some questions for you. Sure. Yep. Hi, Julian. Hi. Let me get you briefly on camera, Julian. And me? Yes, you, because you are Why the son of Detta. You want to sit here briefly? Uh, and I'm kneel. just going to you'll kneel. I'm just going to show the fire because here we are. It'd be great if we could send this to Eleanor. Oh, she'd love it. Do you think she would? Mm. So, so we're honoring. Um, um, Judith here, who's talking about the original grandmothers and her part, and then you are a representative of your mum, Detta. Okay. <laughs> That's why we're here. I don't know if I'm worthy. <laughs> well, you wrote to Eleanor, and she invited you yeah. and me to come and spread the ashes, mm -hmm. and then Judith heard about it. So the, I have questions. Do you know why Detta was invited to become a grandmother in the early days? I don't know that story. Um, do I? I I only know that they gathered a group of women there for the first council, and I would imagine that she was friends with one of those women and heard about it and came. Yes. Um, but yes. the grandmothers in Tucson would probably know better than I do. So we'd happened. better go to Tucson and find out. Well, there's going to be a grandmother's council in October, you know. Yes. You could go as Detta's daughter-in-law. Mm -hmm. And... And, and I'm you the same age as you, so if you're a grandmother, do you have children? I have, I have uh, six adopted children and nine grandchildren, but I think so you're I a, might you're be a bona little fide. older than you are. I'm 68. Oh, okay, yeah, you're a little older than me. <laughs> so you're a bona fide grandmother. I've just got lots of grandchildren in terms of patients. <laughs> but so, so that I was wondering that, and too, I'm curious um, about 
what the grandmothers have done. You know, because Detta used to talk about holding presents in the circle at conferences. Well, Eleanor would sponsor people. I know that there's many grandmothers who go out and do global work. Mm -hmm. uh, Kathy Murdy, I believe her, I, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Kathy uh, has, she's a storyteller and she's done amazing things with for human for human rights in the world. Uh, Lorraine Norgard has made films um, connected to the the wisdom of the Ojibwe people and a PBS special for preserving Ojibwe wisdom and has worked with the United Nations and that may be a connection she has with Eleanor. Yes. Um, yeah. Well, what does the Eleanor? Beauty of, uh, the, uh, and I don't know Eleanor that well. I only know that she sponsored Lorraine to come to Iona and that I and found Detta. out that she yeah. had a house here in Detta, right? Mm -hmm. But I, I haven't met her. I know Lorraine went to Costa Rica. And with Detta? I think Detta went to Costa Rica, yeah. so they would have probably gone together. Quite a, quite a connection. Several times. But what I loved about the council is whether it was a grandmother who was quiet in her home, writing poetry or or doing pottery or sculpture, like Marion Sinclair is one of the grandmothers that have been part of the council for a very long time. She's a sculptress in Bisbee, Arizona. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever it is that calls us to our passion is the vision of the grandmothers. Yeah. Coming together to speak mindfully with Christina Baldwin's peer circling. Oh, it's yes. part yeah. of the vision mm -hmm. of the grandmothers. And it's enriching our experience of community um, through our own weaving and through a group weaving. And each one of the women that I've met in the Grandmothers Council are empowered to, to know that there is a real blessing in being a crone. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, so much laughter. So much laughter when we get together and we have a caldea or, you know, this acting and having the night when everybody puts on a show and laughs and laughs and laughs. And the joy that we share is a memory that's so sweet. All of us, all of us are woven into the fabric of the grandmother's weaving. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. Then, then, um, I remember Detta came to stay with us in Ojai one time and she had been doing some work with Jean Shinoda Bolin on the million circles. They wanted a million circles of women. Oh. And I wondered if it was also somehow connected with the circle of grandmothers. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know that information, but I would imagine, you know, because this seed Imagine in 1994 there weren't that many grandmother circles and that council began something that I call triggering the collective because they sprout up, you know, because suddenly there's grandmother circles here and there's circles there. And, but as far as I know, in 1994, that grandmother councils were one of the first visionaries, one of the first groups that called Council of Elders. and it. It was, in my opinion, fulfilling the Hopi prophecy. Yeah. And at these times when those prophecies are fulfilled, they always go out in waves affecting people in so many ways. Like the prophecy that was just fulfilled with Standing Rock, with the water protectors in Standing Rock. Um, that was fulfilling a prophecy. So when a group of people take action and it's prophetic. It's going to have an effect on the collective. And I believe that that's what her life represents, Detta's life represents. Yeah, especially since she did so much work with the Hopi in the early days. Mm -hmm. so. Well, and she spoke, you know, of each stone being sacred. You know, each stone is sacred. And so when, when a grandmother's council comes together, you know, um, it's not all the pebbles on the beach, perhaps, but they all touch each other. Mm, that's beautiful. Uh, I want to thank you so much. And um, could we have your flute as a closing, a few closing Certainly. notes? I just think this is absolutely wonderful. Thank you, Judy. Let's see if she agrees. Does she agree? And sending mm -hmm. death. Thank you.
so much, Judy. Thank you. Really appreciate you and us all turning up at Iona together. It's meant to be. Magical. And we, magical. And we thank Eleanor hugely for being for us. The catalyst. The catalyst for all of this and for her loving connection with Detta, which was just so special. Thank mm -hmm. you. Meridianholistichealth.com